Hi guys and welcome back to part 2 of my Inktober video 2018. Sorry it took me so long before I could share the second part but I wanted to edit other videos before sharing this one. In the first part I talked about my experience and my thoughts about Inktober which I will leave the link to the video on top right and in the description if you want to check that out. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about the art supplies I used for painting my Inktober drawings this year and I will share my experience about painting with inks and Ecoline. I'm not sure how to pronounce Ecoline, I think you say Ecoline in English and Ecoline in Italian, but I will keep saying Ecoline. And later in the video, I will also talk about how to have a steady control of your hand when inking or painting with brushes. If you aren't new to my channel, as you may know, I have a steady hand and a good control of the brush when painting and I wanted to talk about it today and this is going to be the perfect video to share my story and share some tips which I hope they will be useful to you. One of my goals for Inktober was to use and also finish some art supplies that I no longer use or not that often. The Inktober challenge is about doing one ink drawing a day for the entire month of October, but you can use other mediums in addition to ink or do inking digitally as long as it reminds of traditional ink. I own almost all kind of medium and so many and old art supplies which I don't even remember where they come from so before Inktober started I looked at what supplies I had and I could use and I used ink from different brands and Ecoline from Royal Tannins which if you don't know what they are Ecoline are liquid watercolors and technically for me they are a sort of colored inks I own black ink from Winsor & Newton, Lefranc and & Bourgeois and colored inks from Pelican. Aside from Pelican inks, the other two are waterproof inks. I used hot pressed paper with smooth texture from two brands, Canson and Winsor & Newton. And I'm very happy that I was able to finish these two paper blocks that I had from a long time because right now I use different papers for gouache which is the medium I use the most and also I don't like to work on hot pressed paper with gouache because the surface is too slippery for me but hot pressed paper is the best paper for inking because the surface doesn't have any texture and it's easy to achieve smooth lines. For my Inktober plant drawings I also used white gouache for creating a speckled effect on top and in some I also added colored pencils to give more contrast. So I have this giant collection of Ecoline which I had to buy when I was in high school. I used to paint with Ecoline a lot in my art classes but we had to buy these giant bottles and still today I have no idea why I had to buy them instead of the small jars which I also have. I don't think I have ever painted with inks before, but it was from such a long time I haven't used Ecoline, which when I was in high school, I actually enjoyed using them a lot. Ecoline colors are really bright, but sometimes even too much, but they are easy to use and they are similar to watercolors because you can both achieve flat washes or nice effect as watercolors. And I wanted to use colors during Inktober because I prefer painting with colors. But I also tried to get out of my comfort zone and paint some plants by using only black, which surprisingly I really liked the result. And I enjoyed painting with only black as well. Ecoline aren't that different from inks either. But it's very difficult to overlay colors and increase the opacity because they are transparent liquids and they can be reactivated with water. So during Inktober 
I only wished that I had colored waterproof inks because it would have been easier to paint my plant drawings. Although I was using a different medium, I still tried to paint the plants in my style by adding colored outline with fine details and thin lines. It was different, but I'm happy that I was able to adjust the medium to my style, but I also had fun experimenting with inks and try different styles. Ecoline and inks aren't that difficult to use, to be honest. Gouache can be more tricky, and I do enjoy the vibrancy of Ecoline colors. I have pens and nibs for inking, but I'm more comfortable and it's easier for me to ink with brushes. So that's what I did, and it's the second topic I wanted to talk about today. To be honest, I think I've always had a steady hand, which is something I don't take for granted, and I'm aware that some people aren't as fortunate as me and may have shaky hands for different reasons, so I'm really grateful to have a steady hand, but I want to share my story on how I improved the control of the brush, because I remember that when I first started painting, my grip of the brush wasn't that steady, and over the years I definitely improved and understood how to have a steady hand and a firmer control of the brush, which I hope that my tips might be helpful to you. But just keep in mind that this is my personal experience and everyone is different and work differently. I think one of the reasons why I had a good control of the brush is because I enjoy painting more than anything else. Painting is something that makes me at ease so the first tip is to be relaxed and enjoy the process when you paint. The second tip is confidence. You have to be confident and be firm in your lines when painting and when holding the brush. Confidence is something I learned along the way, which at the beginning of my artistic path, I didn't have confidence in my art, which I believe it also affected the way I was painting and sketching as well. Confidence in your art is something you build yourself by improving and getting better, but definitely if you have someone, like a teacher or a friend, that encourages you in what you are doing, like in my case, it definitely helped me to increase my confidence in my art skills. But there are some tips that I want to share that might help you to be more resolute when painting, and to have a steady hand when inking or painting with the brush. The first thing, you have to be resolute and firm with the direction of your hand and how you are holding the brush. It's a bit difficult to explain by words, but I will try my best and I hope it will make some sense. If you aren't sure that you will get a steady line with the current direction or position of the paper and of your hand. Then change the direction of your paper or the position of your hand. If you have the feeling that the line you are about to paint will be interrupted and the gesture of your hand and the movement of your hand won't be loose, then change the position again until you are sure that you can easily and steadily follow the line that you want to paint. Maybe it's obvious, but if you draw the lines with the pencils first and have a guide where to paint, it will be easier to follow the line. But also don't let you down and don't be discouraged if you can't perfectly follow the pencil line. It happens to me many times and that's totally okay as long as it's not a major mistake, you know? We aren't perfect, so just take it easy. Another thing, most of the time I rest the palm of my hand on the paper or on my desk when painting long thin lines because it helps me to not have a shaky hand when painting. Another tip is to have the longest line as possible without any interruption of your brush in order to have a very clean and nice continued line. 
You can easily resume where you have interrupted the line. If painting one long line is too difficult, I do it as well. But if you can paint only one line, you will avoid any blobs in the line that can be created when you paint the line with more steps. You can be fast or slow when painting the lines. It's up to you. You have to find your own piece. Another tip is the type of brush you use. Having brushes with a very pointed head, no matter the size of the brush, it will help you to paint thin lines. But of course, the more thin the brush and the head tip is, the easier it will be to paint thin lines. Detailed brushes, for example, they make it easier to paint fine details and thin lines. When painting with bigger brushes, you just have to be careful on how you hold the brush. If you hold it a bit diagonally, you might get thicker lines. Holding the brush upright, it's very difficult when painting, even for me, and it's not very comfortable, although you will be able to paint thin lines for sure. So I would recommend you to do some practice in the way you hold the brush and find the position that it's most comfortable to you, that allows you to paint thin lines and using different kind of brushes to see the difference. Last May I got this new mini liner brush, which is also a rigor type of brush with long bristle, which honestly changed my life and it has never been easier to paint thin lines. I still haven't figured out if it's because of the special handle that makes easier to hold the brush, no matter in what angle I hold the brush, or if it's because of the long bristle that it's easy to paint thin lines with this brush. I still don't know, but I love this brush so much. Regarding the position of the paper, when I film myself painting for YouTube videos, I try to not move the position of the paper too much because it can be a bit annoying and not very pleasing to watch. So I move my camera or myself to find a comfortable position for painting so that the video will be also nice to watch. But for my Inktober drawings, since I wasn't planning to make a YouTube video for each single painting and I just filmed some clips when I thought it was interesting to see the painting process of certain plants, I didn't care too much about filming videos nicely. <laughs> So in short words, as a conclusion, the key is to find the position of the brush, of your hand and of your paper that is most comfortable to you, to have more stability in the control of the brush, because it's totally okay to change the direction of your painting, if that will help you. So basically, when I paint, I take into consideration the position of my hand and the direction of the paper, if I'm not 100% sure and I'm not convinced that with the current position of my hand and of the paper I won't get a steady and uninterrupted line with a loose gesture, loose movement of my hand, I already know I won't have a steady hand either. So I change the direction of the paper or of my hand until I find a comfortable position that I know I will have more stability in the grip of the brush, so that I will be able to paint thin long lines by also resting the palm of my hand on the paper or on the desk when painting, because this way I know I will be firm and resolute in the lines I'm going to paint. It's difficult to explain it by word because it's more about feelings and how you feel. You have to feel firm and resolute when painting. I have no idea if these tips are obvious or if they can help, but I hope so. I get lots of comments, especially on my painting videos on Instagram, on how people are amazed by my steady hand and control of the brush, which before I started filming videos, I never paid attention to that, but I really appreciate these comments because it makes me so happy to know that you enjoy my videos. 
I personally find art videos, especially watching other people while painting, a relaxing way to relieve your stress and take a moment to enjoy yourself, which is what I love about other people's art videos and that's one of the reasons why I started doing the same by sharing the painting process of my art. And I think that's it. I said everything I wanted to say. I hope I was able to explain well and that it made some sense. But of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will be happy to reply to you. Just a quick info that my Inktober zine, prints, stickers and originals from my Inktober plant drawings are available on my Etsy shop, which I will leave the link in the description if you want to check it out. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!